Prince Harry and Meghan Markle have proven themselves impressively successful in securing huge deals with Spotify, Apple, Netflix and Procter & Gamble. But when will the world actually get a look at the TV shows, documentaries and podcasts they committed to produce? They signed a lucrative deal with the streaming giant Spotify, reported to be worth $25 million, equivalent to £18 million, last year following their move to the US. The multi-year partnership promised to produce podcasts that promote diverse and inspiring voices, under the couple's brand Archwell Audio but so far it has delivered just one episode of their podcast 37 Minutes. It includes a three-minute trailer and a Christmas special from the Sussexes in December which ran for 34 minutes. On December 29 released a holiday special on their Archwell Audio platform. The episode featured guest appearances from stars including Sir Elton John, Naomi Osaka and James Corden. In it the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, reflect on the year, speak openly about the power of compassion and a short clip of their son Archie wishing listeners a happy new year. Spotify said it was, pleased, with the couple's podcasting debut and was, looking forward to a full-scale launch of shows this year. But streaming bosses and fans hoping for more Archwell content have been left bitterly disappointed, because no episodes have been launched since. It may be a while before episode 2 arrives because they are currently on parental leave after the birth of second child Lilibet Diana. The pair are claimed to not have been given their £18 million fee up front. They will only receive the full sum if they meet their agreement with Spotify which stipulates there must be regular content. While creating TV and podcasts takes time, and the pandemic has for obvious reasons slowed production down, the clock is ticking for Harry and Meghan to prove they are worth such astronomical sums of money. Despite the couple taking out five months paternal leave, which means they may not resume working until November, industry sources insist the deal is still on track with information on the next episode expected later in the year. However PR guru Mark Borofsky also suggests Meghan and Harry may have pre-recorded podcast shows ready for broadcast between now and 2022. He added that even if the shows haven't materialized yet, it's a win-win for Spotify to have two of the most famous people in the world connected to them. They hoped Meghan and Harry's podcast would attract more people to the service, which would therefore lead to more listens for other shows. Explaining their dip into the audio world, the Duke and Duchess said previously, What we love about podcasting is that it reminds all of us to take a moment and to really listen, to connect to one another without distraction. The Spotify deal is just one in a string of lucrative deals the couple signed since quitting royal life, including partnerships with Apple, Netflix and Procter & Gamble. Meghan recently celebrated her book Making the Best Seller List by reflecting on writing it as a love letter to Prince Harry and their young son. The news comes as Meghan is gearing up for a new interview on Sunday after her book topped the New York Times bestseller list. The 39-year-old will be speaking about her debut book The Bench, which follows the relationship of a father and son. Meghan will be speaking to presenter Samantha Balaban on the weekend show at 8 to 10 a.m. Eastern Time, which is around 1 to 3 p.m. British Summer Time. Omid Scobby, a friend of Harry and Meghan, confirmed the news. Harry and Meghan use Archwell Audio to produce their podcasts for Spotify. So far, Meghan and Harry's Archwell organization have partnered with organizations including the World Central Kitchen, the Center for Humane Technology, and the Loveland Foundation which provides mental health resources for black women and girls. These centers are designed to operate as relief resources in times of crisis and be a community space year-round. And in June, after releasing her first children's book, Megan worked with First Book and her publishers to distribute 2,000 copies of the book, called The Bench, for free. One of the places to receive some of the books was the Assistance League of Los Angeles, where Harry and Megan planted flowers with preschool children in memory of his mother Diana last summer. Harry and Megan also used the foundation to share stories which are important to them, and to advocate for causes like COVID-19 vaccine equity. The couple asked followers to donate to charities which were distributing the vaccine in nations where access was limited in lieu of presents for their son Archie's second birthday, and confirmed millions of dollars was raised to support the cause. Archwell Productions is the branch of the couple's organization which manages their deal with Netflix, 
to produce children's programming, documentaries and features. Later this month, June 29 to be precise, we will hit the 300-day mark since news of their first deal, with streaming giant Netflix, was announced in no loftier place than the New York Times. In April this year, the couple's Archwell Productions announced its first project, a multi-episode documentary series about the Invictus Games, the sporting competition Harry had founded for wounded veterans, imaginatively titled Heart of Invictus. Harry had already made his Netflix debut in a similar project earlier last summer, when he appeared on camera in Rising Phoenix, a documentary which told the story of the Paralympic Games. So far, for a figure that has been estimated to around the $100 million mark, all Netflix has gotten is a series about an organization and event created by the Duke. Or to put it another way, as of the 300-day mark, Harry and Meghan's Netflix deal will have been worth $333,000 per day. Harry and Meghan weren't hand-picked by Netflix because they are the most talented, thoughtful and creative voices in the room. It's because they are two of the most famous people in the world right now. Sure, the pair probably do have a clutch of worthy ideas and are hungry to throw themselves into their self-appointed mandate to change the world, one stream at a time, but they snagged these contracts because of who his family is. In addition to running a busy foundation, Harry is the chief impact officer for Better Up a professional coaching firm based in California. His working hours and salary have never been confirmed, so it's not known how much of his week is taken up with that job. He is also on the Aspen Institute's Commission on Information Disorder, which is co-chaired by journalist Katie Couric. And he continues to work with Invictus Games Foundation as a patron. Both he and Meghan retained a number of private patronages in the UK when they stepped back from the senior royal roles, but no longer represent the Queen in those. Though the work will continue, they will be seen far less in the coming four and a half months, as they take several weeks leave to start life as a family of four, after welcoming baby Lilibet Diana. In another royal news, the Queen is looking for people to work in the stunning gardens of her Sandringham estate in Norfolk. An email has been sent to people who have membership to the country abode to give them the opportunity to get hands-on at the estate by working alongside staff gardeners on vital tasks in the grounds. The workers are also being told they will be able to furthering their own knowledge of the outdoors. But there's a catch. All the work is unpaid voluntary work. The volunteers will apparently be given tuition and are also asked to bring their own gloves, sun cream, insect repellent as well as a water bottle. The first volunteers will get started on the 25th of June and must be available to work from 9 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. They'll be given specialist tuition at the start of the day, before being divided into smaller working parties and given their own tasks. Meanwhile, the Sandringham estate is also looking for a paid, full-time gardener. The estate's website has a job description which offers a job with the Royal Gardens team. The successful applicant, according to the advertisement, must be enthusiastic, hand-on and have a good understanding of horticultural principles and organic practices. Thank you for watching. If you liked, feel free to leave a comment below. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon to get new video updates. We will update the latest videos about the royal family every day. Thanks and goodbye.